Hi, I'm Mikey Pruitt, a product manager at DNS Filter. Let's review our new feature, Data Export. The first step is to enable Data Export in your subscription. You can see I have 78 users in my Vandalay Industries organization, and I'm going to enable the Data Export add-on for all 78 users. Now we can jump to the integrations page to set up the connection. At the top, you'll see the two new SIM connections, Amazon S3 and Splunk. You can also access the configuration under Tools Data Export. I'm going to start with the Amazon S3 connection. Take note of the facts. The export runs approximately every 10 minutes, and there's a sample export file in our help documentation. So let's configure the export. We're going to do Amazon S3. Now let's head to AWS to get the credentials needed to set up the connection. Here we are on our AWS console. I'm going to select S3 and we'll create a new bucket for this purpose. Give the bucket a name. Take note of the AWS region as we'll need that for part of the configuration. For my purposes, I'll leave the rest of the settings as default, but configure these to suit your needs. Now that we have our bucket, the next step is to create security credentials. You can create a new key pair under Access Keys. Download the key file and keep it safe as this is sensitive information. Now with our credentials and bucket set up, let's head back to the DNS Filter Dashboard and configure the connection. We'll add our bucket name, the AWS region, mine was US East 2, the Access Key, and the Secret Key. Now we can test the connection. The connection was successful, so now we can finalize the configuration and go back to the data export dashboard. Now let's head back to AWS and see if there's any data. Here's the bucket we were testing, and there's some of the data that has been exported. I've already downloaded one of these files so we can take a look in a spreadsheet, so let's do that now. You can see the domain, where they originated from, which server handled the request, the domain category, and whether the domain was allowed or blocked, plus other useful data. This data is now available to import into another tool or store long term. Now that we've seen the Amazon S3 connection in action, let's test Splunk. Only one connection is allowed at a time, so we'll delete the Amazon S3 connection and then reconfigure using Splunk. We use Splunk's native HTTP event collector API, so your URL should be similar to the placeholder text shown in the URL field. Enter your URL and the collector token provided by Splunk. Then verify and test the connection. Great, the connection was active. Finalize the configuration and head back to the data export dashboard. Now let's take a look at the data streaming into Splunk. Here I am on a Splunk Cloud instance. I'm going to use the search app to find any DNS queries coming from my organization, Vandalay Industries. And there's the data. Obviously, there's a lot more you can do with Splunk than just search, but we'll leave that up to you. Please review our support docs at help.dnsfilter.com for more information. Thank you.